networks and networks in general. A brief introduction, what a network is, uh, where it all started, where does network theory come from, actually graph theory come from. And then we'll, uh, we'll go on and talk about, we have an example, we, we'll talk about some difference, about different structural properties of systems, and what they imply, and what has been discovered up to now. And then we will try to get to Bayesian networks, if we have time. And after that, we'll talk about uh, how people might make decisions. It's a guess. It's a pretty good guess. And so, do you know when network theory started, or graph theory started? What is the origin? How long ago? Yeah. Who is that? 1736, Gabriel yeah. Heuer. In Germany, he was asked, uh, there was a common problem in Königsberg. Königsberg uh, is on a river, and there are two branches of the river. And there is an island in the middle. And there are seven bridges that connect these islands to the mainland. And now, people asked, uh, is there a path that allows you to cross every bridge only once? This is Tim's back. These are the bridges. Now there is no path that connects the bridges. And actually, from these steps, the first graph theorem that we have, and it's basically that if you have more than two odd vertices or odd nodes, does anybody know what an odd node means? It actually means a node with an odd degree. You know what a degree is? It's basically the amount of connection they have. So in this case, you have more than two dots that have more than three little lines on them, or they have three or odd little lines. So that means that there is no Euler path. That means there is no path. No, you cannot go from one part to the other, only crossing every bridge just once. There is at least one bridge you have to cross two times. And this is how this is the first graph theory. This is how graph theory started, and from that stems network theory and the social network. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have that. I have the angel of Galaxy 2. So if somebody wants to be Latin, but I don't have any. Yeah. So we have a few lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, what it, just going back to basics again, yeah? what is a, a network? Basically, just an arrangement of lines, intersecting horizontal and vertical lines. That's how it's defined in the in the dictionary. Um, as you see here, it's a web, a maze, a system. You can have a network of friends, you can have a network of lanes, articles, whatever. So, what's a social network? It's basically a, a social structure, which means which means it's made up of people, basically, that have relationships to each other. So these relationships in the network community, like it can be friendships, it can be kinships or family relationships, it can be information exchange, so you have a connection to someone because you exchange information with them, or it can be just a market exchange, so I sell something to you, so I have a connection to you from one node to another through a line. So we have most of you have probably been by physical sciences, you're, you're probably familiar with a lot of the physical interaction networks, um, food webs, um, that's not what it's called, airline networks, which is something that um, is shown in this one here, is a network of the paths that airlines fly in and, and the, um, what call the airports they land at. And then there's social interaction networks. And I always like to show this one because this one here is a um, social network of the Jefferson High School. They follow the students around for a year. The pink ones are the girls and the blue ones are the boys. And this is their sexual interactions in that high school over a year. So as you can see, they're all connected in this big group here. There's a lot of monogamous relationships. There's 63 monogamous relationships in this network. <coughs> There's also um, People who are monogamous but their partners aren't necessarily monogamous in this, um, in this drawing here. So this is an interesting, just an interesting social interaction network. Yes. I need to ask how, <coughs> how the heck did they get that information? The question is why we didn't go to this school. <laughs> Um, they did a study um, in Melbourne where they looked at drug use 
terms of um, interactions, uh, needle exchanges and things like that. So that is with, uh, who changes, exchanges needles with who else. And it, it's interesting in the sense that you can actually sort of predict what happens if the disease sort of pops into the community. Um, so, in go the, back. I wanted the student to know, uh, as a student, the participants to know the way you handle the comments and the questions. That's, that's how you do it as an experienced lecturer, right? <laughs> so she just ignored those comments. <laughs> 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 you didn't say it very much. Um, okay, so we go back to our matrices again. And the, um, I'm just showing you here that we have what we call a network theory is called a node or a vertex or an actor. <coughs> These lines are called links or edges or ties, and as I said, that can be anything, that can be a market exchange or a family relationship. These can be people or they can be institutions, they can be organisations, whatever you, whatever you choose. So, there, um, networks can be undirected or directed. Basically, um, if it's easiest to explain by explaining what a directed one is, it's basically, um, I sell something to you, you don't sell anything to me. So you know the direction of the flow of information, or in this case, trade. In these ones, there's no information about the direction of the flow. So it might be a friendship. So if I'm your friend, you're automatically my friend, although that's not always the case. <laughs> <laughs> so they um, can be weighted. So you could say, um, this is, for instance, a really strong focus. This might be the number of years that you've been friends. So these number four and five might have been friends for 20 years, whether these two guys here might have been only friends for five years. So that the thickness of the line might designate the, a, 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 um, a continuous variable in a way. And again, the same for the um, um, direct networks. Now the characteristic uh, difference between characteristics uh, undirected and directed is that one symmetrical, which is obviously you can see that the lines, that the um, numbers above the, the uh, um, diagonal are the same as the ones below, so it's um, symmetrical. Whereas two, one and two here have three, but there's no um, three out here. So everyone understands it's pretty simple. So that's the basic structures of networks. So I just Go away from the matrices, matrices for a little while and just talk about social networks. Where did that interest in social networks start? And, and Jakob has sort of talked about where social, where graph theory came from, although the Indians have been doing it for much longer. But the interest in social networks started with a gentleman by the name of Sandy Grumpy. <coughs> and he looks a bit grumpy in this photo. I don't know where really he's seen that. Um, Basically, most of who of you in the room has, has heard of six degrees of separation? Everyone, almost everyone, right? Yeah, every, almost everyone would have heard of that sort of term. Now, I heard the term, when I first heard it, I, I, I realised I'd heard it before, but I didn't actually know where it came from. And it was actually an experiment that this gentleman did, and although he did the experiment, he didn't call it six degrees of separation, but what I'll do is I'll just explain the experiment, and then I'll explain where the term came from. So, he did this experiment where he sent um, packets of, um, that to randomly um, selected individuals around the states, and the packet had information in there to say to the person, okay, I want this packet to go to a stockbroker in, in Boston. Now, if you know the stockbroker, you send it straight to him. If you don't know the stockbroker, send it to someone who you think might know him, or who might be closer to knowing this person. So if I didn't know him, I'd send it to, to Rashid, because I think Rashid's really well connected, so he might know this stuff, right? So that's how that experiment started. So he sent it to all these participants, and again, if the letter, um, the, the person knew it, then he sent it straight there, otherwise send it to someone else. And the recipient of the packet, or the parcel, basically set, put his name on a bit of paper say that he received it and sent it on. So when it got when the packet eventually arrives at the stockbroker, then we know how many steps it took to get how many people it had to go to to get to that final stockbroker. Which basically 
is, oops, is what we call the chain name. So, well, this is an average chain name, which you can't make half the person, I suppose. But, so, the, the, only 20% of the packets actually arrived in the final destination, and the sample size is actually not that, that big. It's only, I think, the, from memory, there was only 60 parcels that, that arrived back in the, in the laboratory, or in the, the Boston Stock Road. So, this is one of the, um, the bits of the paper that actually shows you <coughs> where the packets went. It went to someone in Omaha, then it went to someone in Iowa, etc., and it ended up with the target person. So this one here, it had a chain link of seven. This one here has a chain link of only four. So on average, for these 60 people, the chain link was six and a half. So this is where the term six degrees of separation comes from, from this simple experiment. So basically, it was popularized by um, a filmmaker that called this film Six Degrees of Separation. And um, that's where, and, and it's surprising because I don't know how many people have seen this film? Not many, many, but most people know about <coughs> Six Degrees of Separation. So this is a famous quote that most people also know for some surprising reason. It's like everybody on this planet is separated by only six people, six degrees of separation between us and everyone else on the planet, the President of the United States, the gondolier in Venice. Like, I knew about the gondolier in Venice without even knowing about this experiment or about this film. I don't know how that's going to happen, but an estimate, I'm bound to everyone on this planet by the planet of six people. So this is actually really interesting that this experiment, which was well thought out, and Milgram wasn't really known for doing nice experiments, he was known for doing quite um, ethically questionable experiments. But, um, it, so this is where it comes from. And basically, since then, all sorts of things have developed. And, and one of the things, I don't know, how many, how many people know of the bacon game? Yeah? And how many people know about the eggless? Okay, so I'll explain a little bit about what this means. On the end, if you go on the internet and find the Bacon game, Bacon is, um, Kevin Bacon is a, a um, actor. And you can find, you can see, you can put your name in, if, you, if you're an actor, you can put your name on the internet into this um, database. And you can say who you've worked with and it will find the pathway that you're distant from and it's like if you, sorry. You put the name of an actor, and sorry. then you put the name of an actor, and then he says how this actor is linked to Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, not so for you. It does not, not for you. <laughs> no, there's not enough. There, there are not all of us. Are you an actor? What? I, no. <laughs> yeah. So you might not, you might not be connected to Kevin Bacon. <laughs> uh, that's what he does, because yeah. I've seen it with the uh, name of an actor. Well, <laughs> I, I've actually never done it, but this is this is similar. I showed you this example because I thought this might be more um, might speak more to the audience here. So this is the, the Kevin Bacon game for mathematicians. So basically, Erdos here is a, is, was a really prolific mathematician. He wrote lots and lots of papers, and he was a he was a character. He was very eccentric to the person, and so he published. He had 507 co authors. So, if you're a mathematician and you're publishing in mathematical papers, you can also on the internet, you can look, you can see how far, if you've got co authors, how far removed you are from Erdos through the connections um, that you make through the network. So, the average, I think this might be, I'm not being very clear here, but basically, the six uh, degrees of separation experiment showed that the six and a half people removed, six steps removed. Basically, if you, oops, if you do the error scale, it shows that every mathematician, on average, is only 4.65 steps removed from errors in their so in their connection to a mathematician. And the maximum is, uh, is three, 13. Would you also be in the errors number? Yeah. Wow. Can you explain it any better? Because I'm not being very clear. So clear basically, right? depending on how many people you're fucking Ergos, that's called Ergos number. Yeah. And the, the assignment one. 